What's up everybody? Welcome to PC Building. So this is gonna be a, a monthly show where I just kind of update my recommended PC build uh, so that we can make sure it's up to date and has all the nicest specs and all the coolest stuff and, and it does all the things. But there's a few caveats. One, I always want it to be under $1,000. That's a typical budget for a mid-range PC, and it's something that a lot of people can swing if they're gonna build something that'll last them four or five years. The other thing is that its primary purpose is video game playing. It's a gaming PC. So we wanna make sure it plays games really well. You can also obviously use it to do other things like coding and video editing and the like, but I'm actually gonna optimize my parts for video games. All right, so let's look at PC Part Picker and let's take a look at what I recommend this month. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing that I went ahead and added is the Ryzen 5 3600 six core processor. Now this is the third gen Ryzen. Why did I go with this one instead of anything else? Well, if we go Ryzen 7, then we're getting a lot more pricey and you don't necessarily see the returns because that eats up so much of our budget, we don't have enough money left over to get a high enough graphics card to take advantage of that CPU. I also switched to the third gen Ryzen instead of the second gen Ryzen, even though there is one that is a very similar price because of the chiplet design. So AMD is known for their chiplets. So it's CPUs and um, organization wise in the CPU die um, that allows it to do something other than what Intel can do. And in the third gen, they really optimize that and it runs a lot better. So if we actually head over to user benchmark, we can see that even though it's only $5 more, the Ryzen 5 3600 as opposed to the Ryzen 7 2700X, it's only $5 more, but you're, you're obviously gonna look at this like, well, eight cores and a faster clock speed and more threads. Why don't I just get the 2700? It's that chiplet design. I like the 3600 better for games. And we can actually see the evidence of it right here. We can see that in CSGO, it gets way more frames. In Fortnite, it gets way more frames. It just performs better. It's 9% better, actually. Uh, same with just the effective speed of the computer all around is better, and that's all down to the actual design of the chip. It's a seven nanometer process as opposed to a 10 nanometer process. Or I think, is it, is, uh... 2710, it might be 12 nanometer. Anyways, the seven nanometer process allows for more chiplets to be on that die. It's just better. We want a smaller nanometer process. Everything's smaller, there's more of them on there. And then you can see average user benchmarks, they're better all across the board. And we can see all the nice to haves are better. Yes, the core count on the 2700X is higher and the clock speed is faster as well, but Video games don't necessarily use all of those cores. If you're doing some hardcore video editing or 3D CAD work or something like that, then yeah, you'll want to go with the 2700X because you want those extra cores. But if you're playing video games, those extra cores aren't doing a whole lot for you. So we can take a look down here, average bench, 88%. It's significant, not significantly, but it is better. And for only $5 more, I think it's worth it. Next here, we have an MSI MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi ATX AM4 motherboard. <gasps> Those are a lot of letters. Basically, we want the 570 series motherboard because it works right out of the box with the third gen Ryzen. And we want Wi-Fi integrated already so that we don't have to buy a dongle and deal with all that. I also went with RGB RAM. If you don't want RGB, you can get a faster memory for probably about the same price. I went with RGB because, well, RGB all the things, and when kids and, and other enthusiasts are building PCs, they want that bling, and well, we've got the bling. This is only 3200 um, megahertz RAM. Now, we could go with something faster. 3600 is actually better for the um, AMD CPUs because they can take advantage of that faster clock speed on the RAM, but, I wanted RGB, so I gave up a little bit to get the RGB. It's also 16 gigs. I no longer recommend eight gigs. Yes, it will run everything that you have right now fine, but a year from now when the new games come out, it's gonna be way too slow. So 16 gigs, future-proof yourself. 
I also went with a 970 Evo 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. This is important. This SSD is gonna perform significantly better than just a flat SSD because it goes over PCIe instead of over SATA, which SATA is a slower connection compared to PCIe. If you think of the bus, which is just like the, the lanes that you can send data through, PCIe is a much bigger bus. It can hold much more people to move them down the road. 500 gigs is gonna be Plenty for us for now. Um, you're gonna be able to install a couple of games, but I would recommend with going, going with a Barracuda 7200 RPM drive, it's about 50 bucks. It does push our price tag over that thousand dollar mark, but I would recommend getting a solid um, or spinning drive to go on to this as well so that you can store all your games that you aren't playing and then just load the game that you are playing um, into the NVMe. But the NVMe storage is so much faster. It's so worth it compared to a regular SSD. It does install a little differently and we do have to worry about overheating. So make sure your motherboard comes with a heat sink or just be aware that that is technically a problem that could happen, but most likely you're not pushing 8K raw videos across this SSD, you're probably gonna be fine. And your load times are gonna be so much smaller with the NVMe version of the M.2 drive. We want that NVMe. I also went with a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. It's a six gig card. Um, it's also overclockable. You don't necessarily have to get one that can be overclocked. You, you're probably not gonna overclock it. But for $275, it's great. And we can see a similarly priced 1660 Super. So these two cards are very similar, but the TI is slightly bit more expensive, but it's also a little bit better. We can see that it has a 2% higher increase in frame rates in five of the most popular games. It also gets rated higher by the effective speed when you're doing video editing and other things like that. Um, Overall, it is a slightly better card. Um, now the Super is newer, but for $40 or $45 cheaper, if you wanted to get that spin, that uh, actual spinning hard drive, you could go with a Super instead. That'll save you 40 bucks. You can then invest that into that faster memory, or you can buy a second hard drive, a bulk storage hard drive to put all your games on. So these two things can be swapped out interchangeably. Either one will totally work fine for anything that you're doing in your games and, and whatnot. So it's all user preference. Do you want to save the $45? Then go with the Super. If not, if you want that little bit of bump in performance, then the TI. And then just a Cooler Master case, it was 85 bucks. I've built in this one before. It is great for cable management and it seems to be relatively easy to build into. Um, there are some other cases, the Leon Lee um, case, which is also really, really nice looking that has a little bit more aesthetic appeal to it. Um, any NZXT case, the case really does not matter as long as it will fit your motherboard. And I went with a 550 80 plus bronze certified um, power supply. It is semi-modular, um, so the CPU cable and the 24 pin connector for the motherboard won't detach, but everything else will. And it's 70 bucks. If you do want to future-proof this a little bit and you have a little bit more money to spend, I would bump this up to a 650 watt power supply. That way, if you ever went with a 2070 in the future, uh, the 2070 requires you to get a 650 watt or higher uh, power supply. But for me, for now, I like the bronze rating and um, 550 watts is fine for this build. You can see estimated wattage only 279 and everything else passes. All compatibility is good. So we're looking at a grand total of $975.28. But if you wanted to downgrade to the 1660 Super and add a spinning hard drive, you're gonna be looking at a very, very similar price as that 7200 RPM Barracuda drive is only a thing like 50 bucks. It's super crazy cheap. Just remember, reminder two, no monitor, no keyboard, no mouse, no operating system. This is just for the PC. But I do like this build. I think it checks a lot of the boxes of what somebody will want to build and it will be useful for five, six, seven years, especially if you upgrade that storage um, so that you can put more on it. 
But this is what I would recommend uh, build-wise for somebody who is building their first gaming PC. Everything goes together relatively easily. Check out our other videos, subscribe to the channel, do the, the, the parts and the buy the things from the links so we get the money. Click on the ads that looks good for us too, I think. I don't, I don't, I don't know how the YouTube algorithm works, but build the stuff. Hopefully you found this insightful, and if not, well, drop a comment down below so that you can ask us questions, or if you're a hacking in student, you get special privileges, you can email me directly, or post it to the hacker box. All right, we'll see you in the next one.